Okay, so um, these muffins are, they're a real family favourite and um, they're super simple and I've struggled with muffins actually because sometimes they're a bit too gooey um, or sometimes they're a little bit too dry but I think these ones are perfect. So I'm hoping you've got your ingredients already so I'll run them um, and, I'll just, and if anybody has got any questions I'm hoping you, you're baking along but if you have got questions feel free to unmute um, and yeah and, and we can talk as we're doing it um, yeah otherwise I'll just I'll just keep nothing away so I to make it really really simple I weigh all of my dry ingredients out in one bowl I've got a really, really good set of scales that carry quite a lot of weight, which means I get a glass bowl on there, and quite a lot of ingredients all in one, and it makes it really simple. So in my bowl, I've got 200 grams of plain flour, 40 grams of cocoa powder, I've got a tablespoon of baking powder, um, and then I've got another bowl here, I've got my sugar, I've got my caster sugar and brown sugar. I've got 100 grams of caster sugar and 30 grams, 30, yeah, 30 grams of brown sugar. Um, I'm using soft brown sugar. If you've got dark brown sugar, that's fine. If you've got demerara, mustard, it, well, it doesn't really matter. It's a really small amount. Um, brown sugar adds moisture to bakes, so uh, they help keep must muffins nice and moist. Um, and same with cookies. If you're making cookies and you have uh, brown sugar in a cookie recipe, you'll get uh, chewier, softer cookies versus if you use caster sugar and they're more sort of brittle and snappy. So that's why I use a mix of brown and caster sugar. If you haven't got it, it's fine, it's okay, but it does help to keep the, the muffins nice and moist. So, hi, hi Sam. Do we need to um, preheat the oven? Is there, did I miss? Yes, yes, let's do that first. So I've got mine on 190. So let's do that. Good shout. Let's preheat our ovens. Um, some ovens obviously get up temperature really quickly, some take a little bit longer. This recipe is actually quite quick, so yeah, it's worth putting the oven on now because it doesn't really take us very long to get everything together. So, um, once you've done that, I've got a big bowl here and I'm going to put all of my dry ingredients together and I'm just going to sift them into the bowl. If you haven't got a sieve, then you can, and I do this sometimes when I'm being lazy, just use a whisk, put all your dry ingredients in a bowl and just use a whisk to separate them. If you're doing it that way, if you give your bowl a shake, you'll see that the lumps will come to the top and you can just break up the lumps. Flour and things like that will sift really easily. It's the sugar that's normally gets stuck right at the bottom and you've got lumps of sugar, but it's, a it's just a good way to mix everything together. So, just going to quickly do that and sift everything into a nice big bowl. The other nice thing about this recipe is that it doesn't really use a lot of, uh, it doesn't really create too much washing up, which is nice. You don't need loads and loads of bits and things. And obviously if you've got a mixer, um, a stand mixer, you can make it in that. Um, but I often bake with the kids, so this works just as well with a spoon and a nice big bowl and it means they get to get involved and do a bit of mixing, which is all they really want to do. So if you're sifting it, you'll see that all the flour goes through nicely and then you're just left with lumps of sugar at the end. So I just push that through with my fingers. This is a really, really simple recipe. So really all we are doing is getting, we're going to be getting most of all our dry ingredients together, the wet ingredients together, and kind of mix it through. So it is really, really simple. Right. How are we, how are we doing? 
Sorry, sorry, can I just cut up? Is it a tablespoon or a teaspoon of baking powder? A tablespoon. Right, yeah. Yeah, a tablespoon of baking powder. If you didn't have plain flour and you only had self-raising flour, that's fine. You can still do them and you would just not put the um, baking powder in. Um, but I, I always do it with plain flour. I tend to have more of that in. So you should now have all of your dry ingredients in a bowl nicely sifted together. In another bowl, I'm going to crack two eggs. I'm using two large eggs. And then I'm going to put my oil in and I'm just going to mix the eggs and the oil together. Leaving your dry ingredients to the side. Well, I've made a right mess of the cracking that egg. I've got two bits of shell in all. One of my goals over lockdown, because uh, I'll be honest, homeschooling went well for about oh, two weeks, and then uh, homeschooling became trying to identify plants in the garden and learning how to make really good muffins and cookies. But I've been trying to get my five-year-old, less so the three-year-old, to um, learn how to crack an egg. And we've got there, which is pretty good. So I've got my eggs in a bowl, put my oil in, and then I'm just going to give that a mix. So oil and eggs in a bowl. Sam, have you got a question? You're on mute. Yeah. Is it eggs and oil together? Yeah, eggs and oil in a bowl. And just give that a little mix. And then we're going to add the rest of our wet ingredients in here. We've got now our oil and eggs in a bowl, giving them a little mix. And now I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla. So I use vanilla bean paste. You can use vanilla extract. Vanilla bean paste is quite nice. It's, um, it's quite strong and you can see little tiny uh, vanilla beans in it. So I think it looks nice in a bake actually, but it's also um, just quite concentrated. So you get really, really nice flavor. Um, so with the vanilla paste, it's just a teaspoon, yeah, but a teaspoon and a half. I've got very little in here, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take whatever I can get out of that one. Okay. And then just gonna give that another little mix. So in a minute, we're going to add that to our dry ingredients and then we'll add the milk. But we also, um, the recipe needs some chocolate, 180 grams of chocolate. You can use, I mean, if you like dark chocolate, you can use a mix of dark chocolate, white and milk, whatever you like really. Um, my kids don't like dark chocolate, so I'm using milk and white chocolate. And if you've got chocolate chunks, um, then you're all good. I haven't, I've just got a bar of chocolate, so um, I'm just gonna chop the chocolate. Leah, yeah. Hi, have you had, added the milk to the eggs and the oil? No, I haven't oh, yet. Oh, don't do that yet, okay. I mean, it, it's fine if you did. If you no. worry about it, it's not gonna make any difference, but I haven't yet. Okay. Um, I've just got my eggs and oil in one bowl, all my dry ingredients in another bowl, and now I'm just, chopping up my blocks of chocolate. So um, I've just got it all lined up on my chopping board um, on a very big knife, just to chop it up into squares. And actually with the chocolate, it doesn't really matter what you use. Um, we're gonna put a third of it, we're gonna leave a third of it aside, which is gonna go on top of our muffins. And then we're gonna put two thirds of it into our muffin mixture.
So I've chopped up my chocolate and I've got my dry ingredients here and I've got my egg and oil mixture. And now with muffins, so all we're gonna do, we're gonna put our liquid into our dry mixture. We're gonna add two thirds of the chocolate chips in. We're gonna give it a mix and then we're gonna put them into our paper cases. But before we do that, um, so just one thing to remember with muffins is you don't, you don't want to over mix them. So I'm, I mean, you can use a spoon or you can use a spatula or whatever, it doesn't matter. You wanna mix it up so that you don't see any dry flour so that all the ingredients are nicely blended together but you don't need to give it a really, really good beating like you would with um, cakes and, and things like that when you're trying to get loads of air into them. So um, you just want to give it a quick mix to get it all together and then it's ready to go into the cases. The other thing as well, um, before we get them into the cases, is if you've got an ice cream scoop, they're really handy. So I use these a lot. It's one of the ones with the trigger on it. I use that a lot with muffins and cakes because it helps you to get sort of the right size quantity in each one. The other thing with this muffin mixture is it's quite runny. So if you're using a tablespoon, it's fine. It just makes a bit of a mess and you, you can end up dribbling around. So I find that these are quite handy because it sort of stops a little bit of dribb dribbling around. So if you've got an ice cream scoop, go and grab that because that would be quite handy. If you're not, don't worry about it. Um, when I'm with the kids, they can't quite manage this, so we just use a spoon and I mean it dribbles all over the place when they're doing it but it's fine they're still muffins aren't they so I've also got my tin here um so I lied on the recipe I'm afraid I said it makes 12 and I was wrong and I forgot it, it, it makes 10 they're a really really good size but it makes 10 muffins so um yeah to get rid of trivia cases you need a uh, muffin tray like this with 10 uh paper cases in them and then we'll be ready to go. So I'm going to put my eggs and oil into the bowl. I'm just going to give it a little scrape because I've got all my vanilla beanie bits that are stuck to the bottom of that. And then I'm going to pour in all of the milk. So you should have 200 ml of milk. When I'm using a recipe that's got milk in it, um, generally I pour the milk out in advance, not, not really, really early, like um, obviously it's a really, really warm day today so I don't, I don't want to leave the milk out, but I, I leave it out a little bit before I start just to let the room come, the milk come to a normal temperature. You don't have to, but it can help sometimes with your bakes if you've got, or if you're reading it to all at the same temperature. So pour the milk in and I'm just going to give it a quick mix. And, I mean, mine is still really lumpy. I haven't mixed it properly, but I'm now going to add in two thirds of my um, chocolate chips. Obviously, you don't need to bother weighing it out. Just So you've got some that are inside the muffins and you've, you've got enough to sprinkle on top. Okay, so everything should now be in your bowl. And you just want to give it a mix so that you've got no dry bits of flour. And you'll see it's a very runny, lumpy mixture. But that's fine. It's going to be lumpy anyway. So that's what mine looks like. Quite sloppy. Oh, and I've just spilt a bit of my, um, my <laughs> pot. <laughs> I'm going to use it. <laughs> right, so we're ready to pour that into our cases. Not pour, just like that. we are going to pour it, that'd be a right mess. Um, I'm going to use a spoon or an ice cream scoop if you found one. And Put it into each of your cases. I think you'll probably get, I mean, with my ice cream scoop, it's probably about a scoop and a half that I get in each one.
is really messy this bit just because it's a very runny mixture but it's worth it I promise So I've got about a scoop in most of them and then I'm just going to top up a couple of them so that I use up all of the mixture that I've got. I've also got quite big cases. Obviously, if you've got small small cases, um, you might find that you've got a little bit of mixture left over. In which case, you might be able to squeeze out an 11th muffin, but... Right, so once you've got all your mixture into your cases, we're just going to sprinkle them. You can't really see them without me tipping them out. I'm not going to do that again. Um, but I've got all my mixture in my cases, and now I'm just going to put a little bit of chocolate chips on top. If you use these tulip cases, which are the ones that I've got, the, um, oh, I've got one to show you, the paper ones, you can sometimes find that you get a little bit of butter that kind of creeps through the folds. So I usually at this point just try and pinch them down a little bit. Right, so the rest of your chocolate, you should have a, bit, a third of your chocolate left. Just sprinkle a couple of chunks on top of your muffins. And then that is, make sure you use up all of the chocolate that you've got left. We don't waste chocolate now, do we? Crazy. And now these are ready to go in the oven. So the oven's on 190. I've got a fan oven I'm using. And they're going to go in for, I mean, this sounds really particular. <laughs> 22 minutes is how long it usually takes mine to bake. But we'll set the timer for, should we say, 18 minutes, and then we'll have a look at them and see how they are. And then um, we can also rotate the tin around at that point and then um, see how much longer we need. But I've made these quite a few times, they usually take me about 22 minutes. So we'll put these in for, 20, uh, for 18 minutes now and then we'll have a check. Also, I've got them in the middle shelf of the oven as well. Right, 18 minutes, and usually that is more than enough time for me to clear up, wash up, put everything away, and then they're done. And what I love about these muffins as well is that they're just ready when they come out of the oven. You don't need to do anything with them, they're just there, um, and they're good to eat. The other thing as well about the oven, so I said I was using the middle shelf, um, and I was going to rotate the tin. So... My oven's, well, it's not very old, it's probably about 10 years old, um, but a lot of ovens, you, you get hot spots in the oven, so you'll find that some things will cook uh, more if they're in the, a back corner or whatever. For me, it's the back left corner, whatever's in the back left corner will always cook, cook quicker than whatever's at the front. So with most of my bakes, I rotate the tray around halfway through, uh, not halfway through the bake, but partway through the bake. Um, I usually do this when about three quarters of the time has gone with whatever I'm baking. So not halfway through, past halfway through. And the reason I do that is sometimes uh, if you open the oven too early and your cakes or your muffins are still rising, all that cool air that goes into the oven when you open it can make the um, cakes or muffins sink. So if you wait until near to the end uh, when things are starting to brown, it's still plenty of time for you to make sure you get a good even um, browning on, on, on all of your bake without the risk of anything um, sinking. So I will, when we go and check those, I'll flip the tray around and then just make sure that everything's baked evenly and baked well. Um, so that's it now for 20 minutes or so. Um, we just need to wait for them to bake. And I thought we could just have a chat.
Um, Priya, just really quickly, Molly asks, does it matter what shelf in the oven you put them on? Yes, I was going to mention that as well. I put them in the middle shelf of the oven. So um, that's always going to give you, the middle shelf is always going to give you the most even baking, basically. Um, if you put things at the top, they could cook a little bit too quickly or brown a bit too quickly when they're not quite ready. And things that are put at the bottom can just take a little bit longer. So, um, yeah, it does matter what shelf you put things in. Um, I mean, if you were good with these muffins, for example, you could put them in the top shelf and you just might need to take them out earlier or flip them around earlier. Um, but I'm really picky about it, especially with biscuits. Biscuits, you've got to bake them just right and they could very easily be undercooked or overcooked and they brown very quickly as well. Um, any recipe that's got a lot of sugar in will brown really quickly. So sweet breads, for example, will brown really quickly compared to a bread that hasn't got sugar in it. Um, and so with those sort of things, I always go middle shelf and flip partway through. Um, again, if you've got loads of stuff in your oven, uh, and sometimes it's more practical to do that, especially I mean, when we're making cookies, there's just so, I mean, they take up so much space on trays and you need to give them space to spread. Um, and if I'm making a batch of 30 of cookies or whatever, then I do want to try and put multiple trays in, but I do still try and keep them close to the middle. I do try not to overcrowd the oven. Um, if you're over the crowd, the oven things will just take a little bit longer and you'll just get things that don't always bake evenly. The exception is, of course, if you've got a really, really good oven um, that circulates the heat really well. So when we were in the Bake Off tent, they had brilliant ovens. They were super, super efficient. So um, things baked really well and you could cram loads of stuff in there, loads of trays, um, and it would all bake really well and really evenly. But they had, um, they were very fancy ovens. Um, that um, yeah, just circulate the heat really well and that sort of stuff. My oven at home is not a fancy oven, so uh, so I need to flip things around and just be mindful of what I'm putting in and where I'm putting it. Um, does anyone have any questions? Do you want to have a chat about books or other bakes or bake off? I can't see the chat actually. I'm about a mile away from my. Um, laptop I might move it a little bit closer I was trying to move the to get the laptop in so you could see um everything that was on my counter but then I'd have to have the laptop about a mile away from me and then you wouldn't be able to hear me so uh yeah I'll um open up the chat or oh there we go okay Sam said you've got 12 muffins um do you need to cook them for a shorter time maybe I mean I think I think they'll still take about, I mean, if we're going to set the time for 18 minutes, we'll have a look at um, 18 minutes and see how they are. Um, but generally, yes, if you've got smaller muffins, they will cook quicker, even if you've got more of them. Um, a friend asked me this the other day about cakes um, and whether things needed to change in time or whatever. I think she's going from a big carrot cake, you know, a six inch carrot cake to small cupcakes. Um, but yeah, obviously if there are smaller cupcakes, even if you've got the same amount of mixture between them, they will cook a lot quicker um, than if you've got a big cake. Um, so Molly said, what have I been reading recently? Cool. So I started reading, so over lockdown, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks. I'm around my kids all day, obviously, and they are lovely, but they are really hard work. And I can't necessarily read or write when I'm around them because I'm doing stuff. They constantly need feeding, like meals and then snacks and then whatever. So I've been listening to a lot of audio. Um, and then I'll also have a book that I'm reading at the same time. So I just finished listening to The Switch, which uh, was on audio. Um, and that was okay. It, I liked it. Um, I wasn't blown away, but it was nice. It was about a young girl and her grandma, a young girl in the city, grandma in the village, and they swap houses, essentially. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. Um, but I was reading a wonderful book called The Joy Luck Club um, by Amy Tan. I think it was written in 1985 or something like that. Um, I was one then. And um, it's just, it's brilliant and I love it. Um, and it's about four um, Chinese immigrant women who move 
from China to America, different times for different reasons, and it's about their relationship with their daughters um, and how they well, how they struggle and the way that they don't necessarily understand each other. Um, it's really, really interesting. And I'm, I find sort of, um, migration stories fascinating anyway. I find it really interesting when my parents talk to me about coming to the UK and what life was like here. Um, I find it really interesting. And I find it really interesting hearing those stories from other cultures um, and how that impacts family and that sort of thing. So I'm really, really enjoying that. Then I, uh, this is terrible, I'm one of those people that reads lots of books at the same time. I saw that A Suitable Boy has started on BBC and I started reading the book about eight years ago, 10 years ago maybe, and I didn't finish it. So I wanted to try and finish it before, and I had a really small amount left. A Suitable Boy is about this big. I had about this much left. So I picked that up to try and get through the last two parts of the book that I had left. So I paused Joy Luck Club, which I think is just a brilliant book, and I loved it, the part that I did read. And I'm now on A Suitable Boy, and then I'm going to finish that, and now I'll go back to Joy Luck Club. And then I've got this reading list, as long as my arm, of books that I want to read. Um, and I love to hear what everybody else is reading as well. What is my favourite thing to cook? Do you know, during lockdown, um, I mean, I've heard a lot about people comfort eating, and and I didn't really think, I mean, we're having puddings after every meal, so I guess that's comfort eating to some extent. Um, I've actually started cooking a lot of Gujarati food, which is the food that my mum used to make when we were growing up. Um, we ate Gujarati food every single day, and my mum was very strict that you had to eat your chapatis, and you've got to eat your curry, and then you can have whatever you want afterwards. So at the moment, I've been trying to make some of those recipes that I haven't really been bothered about cooking, because I used to just eat them at my mum and dad's. But as I haven't been able to visit them in the as often as I, you know, I would have, I'm trying to make some of that stuff at home. With baking, I think my favourite thing to make, do you know what, honestly, it's not just because we're making, it's probably these muffins or cookies. I, I'm really practical and I just, I don't always like faffing about with fancy icing and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I love bakes that just come out of the oven and they're ready. So bread is great, it comes out of the oven, it's done. You don't need to fast about with it, it's just ready. These muffins, I think, are really good because they're quite indulgent, they feel like a treat, but they're just ready as soon as they come out. Um, but I've, I've got two little kids, so I end up doing a lot of baking with them. Um, as soon as I get scaled out or they see a carton of eggs on the table, they're all over it. Mummy, mummy, can I help? Can I do something? Can I do something? And they just, they swarm. So um, I make things that they will enjoy, things that are quite easy, I suppose, and straightforward. Um, I do love cooking in general. Um, I really, really enjoy it. Um, I find it's quite a good way to switch off from things and you can put podcast or audio book on and I cook for ages and, and I really love it. So I, um, my book, I started writing my book um, about three years ago. Um, and I was on maternity leave for the second time with my son and I found myself feeling a little bit lost. Um, and then I was also, uh, my role at work had been made redundant and they were also looking for other jobs for me to do. So I was having a bit of a, ah, what do I do with my life? What are my passions? I don't even remember what I enjoy anymore because all I was doing was cleaning nappies, basically. Uh, not cleaning nappies, cleaning bottoms. Um, and so I started writing my book then. And my book is about a group of British Asian women and they, I'd always wanted to write a book about being British Asian. I think it's, um, I think it's really interesting when you've got two sort of cultures that you're really influenced by. And um, I understand my parents' way of thinking and why they want me to do certain things and why they have expectations of me. But I also have my own ambitions and things that I want to go after and things that I want to do. And those things don't always match. And, and that's the same for a lot of my other Asian friends that I have. And I found that really, really interesting. Um, I have friends who are gay and they've been in a relationship for a long time and their parents don't know. Um, and things like that. And I find that really interesting. So I've wanted to write a book about that for a while. Um, so in my book, there are four girls and they go along to a cooking class run by an older 
Indian lady. Um, and she has certain um, so judgments about the girls um, and they have certain things that they think about her. And in the Indian culture, um, being able to cook is quite a big thing. So I grew up hearing my mum say things like, when you get married, your mother-in-law won't tolerate this. And what are you going to eat if you can't learn to cook Indian food and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and it's kind of frowned upon to some extent if you can't cook Indian food. Um, so I find that quite funny. And so this old lady in the book is running cooking classes and these girls coming along to cook. And they're not necessarily all willing cooks. Some of them are going along because their parents have said, do you need to learn how to cook or you're never going to find a husband? Um, and, and one of the girls actually really, really does want to learn to cook because she wants to be the perfect wife and she thinks that that's something she needs to be able to do. And it's, it's about them and how they come together, how they um, support each other. They've all got different things going on, different dramas and dilemmas, and they kind of help each other through them. And for the older lady in the book who thinks she's got nothing to learn from these young girls, she does take away a lot from her relationship with them. So it's about that. It's about a group of Asian women at a cooking class um, and what brings them together. Um, so, uh, oh, Catherine's asked me who's my favourite Chinese TV judge. Um, oh, I, oh, do you know what? That's really tricky. They are, they're both really helpful when they give feedback um, and they can both be really harsh and they can both be inconsistent. Um, so that's tricky. Um, I learned quite a lot from Paul, uh, I think when he gave feedback in the tent, he was very harsh sometimes, really quite, quite mean sometimes, and quite critical, but would generally um, give you a bit of advice as well. So he'd say, I don't like this cake because it tastes too whatever, you should have done this or you could have done that. And that was actually quite helpful. So when we're in the tent, the feedback that we get from the judges goes on for quite a while. You only see snippets of it on TV, but it's actually quite long. Um, and it's usually very, very constructive. Um, so I felt like I learned quite a lot from Paul. Um, I think Prue was generally a little bit more sensitive and she would, if Paul was being quite harsh, she would try to find the positives um, in your bake or whatever you've done. So she's a little bit more sensitive. They, we don't actually spend a lot of time with them. So when we're on site for 12 hours a day, um, and we see Sandy and Noel because they pop around and they'll come around the tent and they'll speak to us, but we don't see the judges as much. So we only really see them when you would see a scene, which is when they come into the tent to judge. But there's a lot of time in between the banks where we're kind of sitting around, going for a walk around the park um, or around the grounds because they're beautiful grounds. Or we'd just be sitting around outside the tent throwing a lemon around from the lemon tree and playing catch and things like that. Um, and Sandy and Noel will come and hang out with us for a bit, but um, we didn't see as much of Paul and Prue, and I think that's partly so that they can be as impartial as they can be. Um, so they kind of put themselves to themselves a bit. Um, so Joanna's asking about um, fruit muffins. Should we increase the cooking time? Um, it kind of depends. I make um, a fruit uh, muffin with Dr. Crumble on top, and, and I use raspberries in that. Um, and I cook them for about 20 minutes. So it's about the same time on a slightly higher heat. It's on 200 degrees. These ones, the reason I've got them, I used to bake them on 200, these muffins, and I always tweak my recipes till I think I've got them right. And the reason I've turned it down to 190 is because white chocolate burns and it doesn't look very nice. It browns really, really quickly. So if you lower the temperature a little bit and leave them in for a couple of minutes extra, it means that the white chocolate doesn't burn as much. Um, but with, yeah, with my um, fruit muffins, I, I cook them for about the same amount of time. Um, with a lot of fruit baits, sometimes the temperature is slightly lower and it's just cooked for a longer period of time because you, you need to, they have a bit more moisture in them, but it, it really varies. My kitchen smells really good right now as well. I think these, these muffins are really good, but even the mixture smells really good. Um, when my kids are here, they, they lick the batter. I'm, I'm not... I'm not interested in the batter. I don't ever, yeah, not a cake batter person. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but the kids are, and they'll be uh, licking away. Um, are there any cookbooks? 
books or baking books which you'd recommend so um i've got a bit of a cookbook pro problem um i have a lot of cookbooks a lot of cookbooks. um at the moment they kind of i think i've probably got about 50 to 70 books at the moment they're all piled on our bedroom wall on the floor because i've just moved um, we've moved one of the kids out of the room that all my books used to be in and he's kept the shelf so I've got nowhere to put them so they're all on the floor until I can sort the room out. Um, I, so honestly it really varies with cookbooks. I think because I have so many, if I see a book that's unlike the ones that I have then I'm drawn to it. Um, one of my favourite baking books is actually a book called Sweet by Yotam Otolenghi and Helen Go. Um, the reason I love it is I think the recipes are written really well and everything works. Um, in fact, there was one time, and I've made so many things from that book, there was one time that I made something and it didn't work. And I was so sure that I had made a mistake because all of the recipes work in there. Um, my favourite cookie recipe is also from that book, it's a pecan and chocolate chip cookie recipe and it's just, it's brilliant. Um, so that was the 18 minute timer. At the cake, I wouldn't expect the muffins to be done. I think they would still need a couple of minutes, but I am going to just have a look at them and rotate the tin around. If you think they look done and you want to have a check, I use a skewer or you can use a stick, poke it into the middle, take it out. If you've still got loads of mixture on there, leave them in there. Um, if it comes out and it's really clean, try it on another couple of muffins. Um, but let's just have a look at them and give them a little rotate. Right, I flip mine around and I think mine are nearly done so I'm going to give them another two minutes. So my, I did say that my, my oven cooks really well at the back so when I rotated it around my ones that were at the front I could see they were a little bit gooey. I didn't even need to check them with the skewer, I could see a little bit of chocolatey goo still there. Um, flip them over and the ones that were at the back look like they're almost done. They looked really nice and browned on top. Um, so that they were fine. Um, oh, Catherine was asking whether I'm a sweet or savoury person. Do you know, I don't, I'm not a massive fan of icing, I suppose. So I love biscuits, love biscuits. Um, but I do love breads and quiches and tarts. I love pastry. I was really gutted um, that I didn't make it to pastry week and bake off. Um, I think that was week eight when I came out in week six. Um, I love making pastry. Um, yeah, I find it, um, yeah, short crust pastry. I, I feel like I've got that down. I've mastered it now. And uh, I love making quiches and things like that. Um, oh, Nikki, you've taken yours out. How are they? They look good. Yay! Nice. Um, I think mine needs, yeah, I've got a minute left. I think they'll be right then. Um, the other thing as well, I'll say, is when you take them out of the oven, um, just put them onto a cooling rack. Um, when you leave, sometimes recipes will say to leave them in the tin for a little bit. Um, that's not, I mean, sometimes that could be for the bake itself, um, to just give it a little bit more time to cook. Um, sometimes it's just because the tins are really, really hot. So they advise you not to fiddle about with them. Um, if you leave them in too long, sometimes they can just get a little bit too moist and things like that. So. I tend to just stick them onto a cooling rack as soon as they're out and then they cool quicker. When the weather was cool, I would cool a lot of my bakes on our garden table actually because um, the kids are really impatient and they want to eat them straight away. So I'd just stick them outside. But I mean, it's probably warmer outside than it's in my kitchen at the moment. Um, so my time has just gone off for the extra two minutes. So I'm going to have a quick look at mine and see how they are. Got one, and I need I think one more minute on that one. Um, we'll see how that goes. So, how's life changed since um, Bake Off? Do you know it's been really, really weird. Um, it's not. Um, it definitely opens up opportunities to do things. 
But the, I suppose there's nothing really guaranteed when you've been on a, a TV show like that. So some of the bakers would go on to do um, baking books or um, they might do some sort of partnerships with brands and things like that. It's all very much down to you uh, to reach out for opportunities really um, and try and work out what it is that you want to do. Uh, I'd love to do a cooking book, not necessarily a baking book, but a cooking book. Um, um, but at the moment, I'm just trying to finish the novel. So I started that before Bake Off. And then obviously when Bake Off happened, everything had to go on hold. Um, and I didn't write for months. And then once I came out the tent, it was really hard to get back into it all and remember where I was with things and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, at the moment, I'm just trying desperately to finish the draft of my book. Um, and there's a lot of recipes in there actually because they've got the recipes of the things that the girls make at the cooking class um so i'd love to do a cookbook using some of those recipes um because there are loads of baking books i mean i've got a lot of them but there are loads of those baking books um and i think some of the bakers that have got very very specific style are really suited to doing um a, a, a baking book like elena has got a scoop and bakes book out which i think is great Whereas I think my baking style is quite varied. I like cooking a whole, whole mix of things. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, life has changed and it is very surreal sometimes um, with some of the things that we, some of the opportunities that we've had or um, yeah, some of the things that we've had to do. After Bake Off, there's a show called um, Extra Spice. Um, and I and there's a panel of guests and you sort of meet them and you have a little bit of chat about your time on Bake Off. And when I was on the show, um, they'd invited Phil Wang, who's a very funny comedian, um, Emma Bunton, actual Spice Girl, uh, and Stacey Dooley. And it was just bizarre. And I just and, and we were just sat around the table having a chat. Um, yeah, it's just it's just really weird. Um, and it's sort of at those times that you realise that you've been on a show that millions of people have watched. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's been weird. And I still have people in the supermarket that'll say, hi Priya. And I'm like, oh, hello. Um, but it feels like a really long time ago, but yeah, things like that are quite uh, lovely. Right, my time is gone, so I reckon mine are done. So I'm going to take them out of the oven, I'm going to get the cooling rack, I'm going to put them all out onto the cooling rack. Um, and if anybody else has finished and yours have come out, I would love to see them. It do smell so good. Oh, nice! Oh, I love that, Sam. You've got a really good rise on yours. Do you know, I, I always make mine in the big tulip cases and they rise really well. I didn't know how well they would rise in a um, hip cup, but those look amazing. Nice. Right, I'll show you mine. What do you like about these? Actually, it's very easy to get out of the um, oven because you can just pinch the corners. Um, and as tempting as these are to eat, they will probably be like molten lava inside. So uh, yeah, give it a minute, I guess. Right, so, oh yeah, they look good. So that's what mine look like. They're kind of um, bumpy and cracked on top, which I love, because that's like, that's what makes them different to a cupcake, isn't it? It's sort of, I love the top of the muffin, it's always the best bit I find. Um, and I love these because they've got stuff on the top, big chocolate chunks and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm good with those. And these keep quite well as well. Um, I, I'd say they're still good after about three or four days. They're still fine. Um, I tend to keep them, once they've cooled, keep them in an airtight um, box or tub or whatever, just to, to keep them nice and fresh. Um, but yeah, I think they're brilliant. My husband has taken our kids out uh, for a day out to Matlock, to the Derbyshire Dales. Um, and we made these muffins a couple of days ago, just a small batch of six, so uh, five of them, so just half the recipe. Um, and they just shove them all into a big bag and they take them off with them because they look pretty. 
the other thing as well, I might say, um, you could try if you like um, coffee and chocolate. Um, I've used a little bit of espresso powder or um, in these before and made like, I don't know, I guess mocha muffins, you could call them. Um, I just put in a tablespoon of uh, coffee um, in the dry mixture, still put all the chocolate in and stuff like that, and they were quite nice. The kids don't like them, um, but I thought they were quite nice. Um, and I also wanted to try these um, and using some, uh, I've got loads of frozen cherries in the fridge, so I was going to try them with frozen cherries to make a kind of black foresty kind of um, chocolate muffin. I haven't tried it yet, but um, I was going to give that a go. And with that, I would probably just put in a handful of cherries in with, um, in with the chocolate chips, uh, mix that up and then just bake them as I have done. Don't know whether I'd put the chocolate on the top still. Um, but yeah, that works out quite well as well. So I hope, I hope you're happy with them. I hope you enjoy them. I really want to eat one, but they are just way too hot and uh, I've just burned my tongue. So I'm going to have to wait a couple of minutes. Are we going to wrap up? Okay. Well, um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. Um, yeah, I will, I think, well, you've got the recipe for these anyway, but um, I've got a post, I think, on my Instagram somewhere with them, which has got the instructions written out. But I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You can't really go wrong. All the wet in one bowl, all the dry in another bowl, mix it all together, don't over mix, and then stick them in the oven. Um, but yeah, we love these and I make them a lot. So I hope you're happy with them and I hope you'll make them again. And I might see some of you on some of the other sessions later. Um, there's one, it's Uncomfortable Truths, I think, which is at four o'clock today. So I'm going to join that. I've got child free day today. So today's my writing day. So I'm going to be writing and um, dipping into prima donna content, which is going to be fun. Um, but thank you for joining us. I hope you're really happy with your muffins. It's been really fun. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the festival.